Hello everyone, I hope you're doing great. I'm Red, welcome in my shop. Today we're going to talk about 3D printing. A few days ago Sunlu contacted me and asked me if I would like to try their new Sunlu S8 3D printer. And I said of course, I would love to. So here we are. I've got a printer right here. We're going to unbox it, assemble it and test it together. Let's get to it. As always, when I open the box of a new toy tool, a new tool, I want to assemble it and try it pretty quickly. But the first thing I recommend you to do is to read the manual carefully. It will help you avoid any mistakes during assembly or testing. The printer is very well packed and protected inside the box. On the first layer of form, you will find a cable, some glue, and all the accessories you will need to get started. I was a bit impatient, so I decided to cut the six zip ties holding the frame of the machine to get the printer out of the box more quickly. But you can also take the printer out of the box first, before you cut the zip ties. The printer was so well packed with foam that I had trouble taking it out, so I decided to just cut the foam and take the printer out. I didn't want to damage my brand new machine, so I took my time and after a few minutes the printer was finally free. At the bottom of the box, just under the printer, you will find a spool of white PLA to do your first print tests. I removed the foam protecting the bed and took a quick look at the machine to see what I needed to assemble it. All you need is in the bag of accessories. In this bag you will find a set of backup parts, 4 M5 by 25 screws, a set of Allen keys, 2 M5 by 8 sliders with screws, a small wrench for the nozzle, a pair of pliers and a scraper. I started the assembly by inserting the sliders as shown in the assembly instructions till the holes were aligned with the white line. Then I put the frame in place. At this point, just make sure that the table and the cable can still move freely. I lined the holes and secured the frame with the screws on both sides. Don't tighten too hard just yet. Then I carefully tilted the printer on the side and secure the frame with the M5 screws. Once it was all done on both sides, I was able to tighten all the screws. On the inside of your printer, you will find a red switch. You can switch from 120 to 230 volts. Don't forget to set it up for your country voltage. It was already set up in 230 volts for mine, so I didn't have to touch anything. Before starting the testing of the machine, I decided to tighten the two belts for the X and Y axis. You never know how long these machines are put in storage, so it's always a good idea to check the belts. And just like that, the assembly was done. I have to say, it's very quick, it literally took me less than 10 minutes to put it together and it's much easier than my Ender 3 Pro. Ok, let's see how it works. I kept the foam around the out hand as long as possible, but it was time to take it off and to remove the bubble wrap around the glass bed. Also, don't forget to peel off the protective paper on the print bed, under the glass. It's easy to miss, but it wouldn't be good for you or for the machine. We're not ready to print just yet, so I put back the clips to hold the bed in place on all four sides. But when it's printing time, don't forget to put only two in the front and two in the back. 
Then I plugged the power cord and plugged the machine. Now let's prep the filament. Sunu put a plexiglass spool stand in the box. I find it quite nice and it's very easy to assemble. You just have to remove the protective paper on all the parts. They will snap together nicely. Then you can secure them with four screws. The spool can now move freely and you can put it next to the printer. Let's have a look at the machine specs. This machine is a Sunu S8. The printing size is 310 by 310 by 400 millimeters, which is quite nice. The machine size is 600 by 490 by 640 millimeters, so that's a pretty big machine. It weights 12 kilos and uses 1.75 millimeter filaments. You can print PLA, ABS, wood, PETG, and PLA CF. Let's turn it on and have a look at the menu. You have many options in the menu. You can choose between English or Chinese. I'm gonna stay in English, even if it's not my mother tongue. You have all the usual option of a 3D printer like prepare, control, with moving the axis, auto ohm. But you also have a bed leveling option that I find quite interesting. We'll get back to that in a minute. You can also disable the stapers, change the filament or, or preheat the hot hand or the bed for PLA or ABS. You can also tune all the features of your machine like temperature, motion, store and restore your settings. Now we are going to put filament in the machine. I'm using Sunlu Marble PLA. I cut the end with a 45 degree angle and inserted the filament in the guide and the extruder until it reached the hot hand. The hot end was already at temperature so when I saw the hot filament coming out of the nozzle I knew the filament was ready. Ok, let's level the bed now. If you skip that part, your print won't adhere to the bed and it will fail. So please, take your time to level your bed carefully. Choose the bed leveling program, the machine will move and when you're ready, click the wheel. Put a piece of paper under the nozzle and adjust the big screws under the print bed until the paper can still move but touch the nozzle. Click the wheel again and repeat the steps for each corner of the bed. Don't forget to put two clips on the back and two clips on the front when you're done. The sides of the bed must stay clear. It's time to choose a model to print now. In the accessories bag, you will find a stick of strong glue and a SD card with an USB adapter. I went to Singivers.com and chose a model quick and easy to print. I went for a fossil from the game Animal Crossing because that's what my kid plays at the moment. I'll put a link to the model in the video description. I download the STL file and open it in Cura. I doubled the size of the model to make it a little bit more interesting. The hardest part with this machine and with any 3D printer is to find the right settings for what you want to print. Fortunately, I have awesome friends who gave me great advice for this printer. And once all the settings were good, I saved the model on my new SD card. It was time to print the first test piece. I applied a thin layer of glue onto the bed. I put the SD card in the printer, went to print from SD, chose my model and hit the wheel. I like to include the printing time of my models in their name on the SD card so I can double check the clock before I hit the print button. The hot end and the bed will hit and when the temperature is right the machine will start the print.
I was really happy with the result of the first test. I really love the marble filament and the print of this model was perfect on the first try. So I decided to try a slightly bigger model. I went back on Thingiverse and searched for my favorite sculpture of all time, the Winged Victory of Samothrace. I found a very interesting model of it, quite simple and small, and it was perfect for my second try. I opened it in Cura, checked all the settings, and saved it on my SD card. The Victory has wings, so I had to print with support, which was a very good test for the machine. And after 12 hours of printing, all had worked perfectly well. The hardest part was to remove the support, but no post-treatment was required. The result was perfect and I really like it. So I decided to increase the difficulty again. I went back online, found the most detailed model of the winged victory on Thingiverse, opened it in Cura and saved it again on my SD card. This model already had support, but I decided to try the experimental tree support option of Cura and I think it was not really necessary. The print took one day and 10 hours, but after removing all the supports and with a little bit of post-treatment, the result was absolutely perfect. Sunu was kind enough to also send me a filament dryer. It's called the Fila Dryer S1. It's like a magic box that will help you to save old filament. And we all have old, sad and lonely spools of filament waiting to be used around the shop. As you can see, my gold filament was breaking very easily. I hadn't used it in months, so I tried to rescue it. I put the spool inside the filler dryer S1 and set the time and the temperature. For PLA, it's recommended to dry the entire spool for 6 hours at 50 degrees. So that's what I did. After 6 hours, I changed the filament in the printer. You just have to select change filament in the prepare menu. The machine will heat up, then unload the filament. You can then hold the feeder open and pull out the filament. Then you can load a new one, just like we did earlier. I chose a small piece on Thingiverse to print. I've been wanting to print a chess set for a very long time, so I chose to print a knight.
and it turned out great. I bought the filament more than one year ago and it sat on shelf for months, but I had a very good result with this print as well. Overall, I'm super happy with this machine. It's a beefy, sturdy, trusty machine with plenty of room for big prints. It's very easy to assemble and very easy to use. I'm also super happy with the dryer. I was able to save old filament and have very good prints with it. If you're interested in buying a new Sunlu S8, I'll put a link in the video description down below with codes. The first of you to use this code on the Amazon page will get a very good price on a brand new Sunlu S8. Thank you Sunlu for sending me all this. Be sure it will be put to good use for future projects and videos. Till next time, be good, be safe, and as always, keep making.